Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be back. I um, have been in this outfit since I left on uh, Memorial Day, and I thought that I would wear it one last time with my pack that I carry with me every day with a cross from Kathy Reese from El Salvador, uh, first aid kit, medicine, a rain jacket. And I thought that I would just leave it here as a symbol of my travels. Um, I, we have a few announcements to make. One is next week is the youth breakfast and everyone is invited. And Mary Perkins is kind of keeping track of who's attending and what food is being brought. So I'd like to invite each of you to reach out to Mary Perkins to let her what you'd like to bring. And for all of us to come next Sunday morning. And I think that the youth breakfast is at 930. Is that right? 915. 915. And... Um, Maybe get there a few minutes early so you can set up your dishes and we can celebrate the youth who are ending their year with us, but also to celebrate the two seniors that we have graduating. Very exciting time to be in a time of transition from high school on to the next stage. Um, and then... Just as an announcement, we are still collecting things for the youth, and I don't know if today is the last Sunday that we're doing that for the for the season. For um, but I saw some folks bring stuff in, and then um, and I'm just really glad to be back. <laughs> it was it was a long time away, and I'm so glad to be back here now. But I look forward to sharing with each of you about my travels and the experience I had. Uh, but today is, a, today is about community and about coming together to follow in the ways of a Brown Hill City in June in Jesus. And I'm glad that we get to do that together. And now please enjoy the prelude as we prepare our hearts for worship.
join me in the unison call to worship. It's printed in your bulletin. Journey in God, pitch your tent with mine, so that I may not be deterred by hardship, strangeness, and doubt. Show me the movement that I must make toward a wealth not dependent upon possessions, toward a wisdom not based on books, toward a strength not bolstered by might, toward a God not confined to heaven. Help me find myself as I walk in others' shoes. So we have a little walk theme going this morning. Um, and this, uh, this hymn, number 23, Come Walk With Us, is a bit of an offbeat walk, meaning that it's extremely syncopated. Um, so we're going we're to try something first to see if we can make this work. So everybody clap with me. Ready? One, two, three.
to college on a music scholarship and gave it up to study philosophy and theology. And some of these songs remind me of the beauty of music and how music brings people together and creates community. So thank you for that song. We've come to the time in our service where we reflect on prayer concerns. And Jim, I'm not sure if April is online and has any uh, prayer requests, but you can let me know. She has she texted. Okay, great. April April texted me. Great. Um, so we want to mention some celebrations from our hybrid campus. Jackie Wilson is very thankful for other prayers for her son, Jen. He's able to walk now and working hard in physical therapy. So we celebrate that, that people on our hybrid streams are um, able to find connection and community with us, and she reports no prayer requests, but I know that we have life happening in our community, and I know that I saw some things come across the forum, and so let us be mindful of all that has transpired in the past couple weeks, and let us be mindful of things like the farmer's market, to build community, people who are sick with COVID, that is still a reality, some of the people on our pilgrimage, uh, tested positive for COVID once they got home from the Camino. So we want to be uh, prayerful for them. And then we want to, you know, pray for peace. Uh, when I reached Santiago, the cares of the world met me there with lots of Palestinian protests. And I saw many Palestinian flags on the Camino, lots of, um, graffiti and artwork uh, expressing liberation for the Palestinian people. So let us be mindful of peace, literally peace in the Middle East, and planetary peace on our earth, on our land, uh, where we are visitors. Um, and let us pray for our church. Let us pray that we begin to Create more porosity within the walls of our church so that we begin to take what we have in this building to our neighbors. If there's one thing that I learned over the past several weeks when I was gone is that we are practicing something in this building that the world needs to know about from children to everyone else. We have something to offer. So let us be in mindful meditation about the gift that we have together as a community. And uh, did you have something, Sally? I do. I just want to wish all the fathers. Yes. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Today. Yes, it is Father's Day. And so my father died in my 20s. And some of you might have experienced loss of fathers. So... Let us be mindful of Father's Day for those who might be grieving this day or celebrating. We hold both the joy and the pain today as we do on all holidays. But uh, a hearty happy Father's Day to the dads here uh, with us and online. Um, I want us to not sing the Lord's Prayer today. I want us to recite the Lord's Prayer. It is a prayer that... I said multiple times a day on the way, um, I was being fed toast and coffee for the morning, and literally I ingested my daily bread to get me to the next stop. And I had a hard time finding protein along the way. Um, I'm really glad to be home to eat chicken here. <laughs> I didn't think that I would be so grateful for the simple things, but you really learn the pilgrim's way. Um, I had some great pork, but it was sliced too thin and not never enough. Um, so I want to pray, and then I want to invite us to pray the Lord's Prayer uh, as I've been praying. 
for the past several weeks, for us to ground ourselves in the prayer that Jesus taught us. But let me first pray for us and pray for global concerns, and then I'll invite us to join together in unison and pray the Lord's Prayer. God, I give thanks for modern day travel, for flying in a tin can to be home in time for worship. I give thanks that the elders sent me off to become a pilgrim and to come back to be able to model moral leadership in these chaotic times. God, I give thanks for this day and for all who are gathered, for the questions that we bring to one another, for the celebrations, for the heartache, for the grief. And I give thanks that you are calling us toward another possible world. One that I experienced on the trail and one that I recognize here in Alfred as part of the kingdom of heaven. Help us to steward your way here in Alfred, both in these walls and beyond these walls. God, I pray for the people of Palestine who continue to suffer, who are without food, electricity, clean water. For victims of war who are unable to receive anesthesia or pain medicine. For the chronic emotional pain and psychic pain that war brings to everyone including those who are watching the news. God, I pray for people who are living with trauma, that you would begin to heal us, self and other. God, that the light that you have given us all that lives within us, help us to shine our light through our words, through our actions, through our commitment to service. God, thank you for the people who joined us for our work day to steward our building and to make our building ready for hospitality, for the summer, and for all who will grace our doors. I give thanks for the people of Alfred who prayed for me while I was away, for the people who were concerned for my knee, for the doctor who treated me in Valmonte, Spain, and wished me a Buen Camino. God, you have showed me that interdependency is really the way forward, something that Jesus taught his disciples. And so we enter into a time together praying the prayer that our brother taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trust, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
a reminder of the talents that we have in this church. Would you please join me in the unison prayer number 1011 in the back of your hymnal? I say a page number, but they're just number prayers. A wilderness beckons us, a desert, a barren place, yet a place of blessing and discovery. Jesus, a steady companion, accompany us as we enter the hurtful places, the frightening places, the dangerous places deep within us. Jesus, our wild and well-traveled guide, lead us into this emptiness where all fall away. And we will have nothing but you. Walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death, where we shall be raised and drink deep, deep springs. Amen.
As we all contribute to the community through our talents and our gifts, some of those gifts are intangible, some are very tangible to keep this church running. In this time of reflection, please think about how you can serve your church through your talents, through your offerings. The offering plate is at the back of the church, both before the service and after. And let us enjoy this period of meditation.
tell you, it's, I've been in my head for the past several weeks, and the mind is a very strong thing. Today's reading is uh, the Beatitudes of the Pilgrim, something a little bit different than reading scripture. It is written from a nun at Church of the Stephen, which is on the Camino de Santiago, the French way, in a tiny village, only eight houses, and the name of the town is Zavodica. Zavodica. Blessed are you, pilgrim, if you discover that the Camino open your, opens your eyes to what is not seen. Blessed are you, pilgrim, if what concerns you most is not to arrive as to arrive with others. Blessed are you, pilgrim, when you contemplate the Camino and you discover it is full of names and dawns. Blessed are you, pilgrim, because you have discovered that the authentic Camino begins when it is completed. Blessed are you, pilgrim, if your knapsack is empty of things and your heart does not know where to hang up so many feelings and emotions. Blessed are you, pilgrim, if you discover that one step back to help another is more valuable than a hundred forward without seeing what is at your side. Blessed are you, pilgrim, when you don't have words to give thanks for everything that surprises you at every twist and turn of the way. Blessed are you, pilgrim, if you search for the truth and make of the Camino a life and of your life a way in search of the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Blessed are you, pilgrim, if on the way you meet yourself and gift yourself with time without rushing so as not to disregard the image in your heart. And blessed are you, pilgrim, if you discover that the Camino holds a lot of silence and the silence of prayer and the prayer of meeting God who is waiting for you. Let us now enjoy the holy meditation as we prepare our hearts for worship.
weather was not cooperating and I was delayed in Rochester for hours, which meant that I missed my connecting flight in Atlanta. And I was gonna be flying with Emily from Columbia, South Carolina. We had connected, there were 17 of us total. <coughs> I went with a bunch of Presbyterian pastors, decently in order as they are. But Emily and I had connected and we were gonna to travel together to Charles de Gaulle, because our stop was in Paris. And I had always heard horror stories about Charles de Gaulle, that airport. It's not only huge, but they refused to speak English. <laughs> and I missed the connecting flight and missed the subsequent flights that I was booked on and went to the Delta counter there in Atlanta. And they said, we can get you out at 11.30 on the Dutch airline KLM. I said, great. So I found myself a small little jazz bar quiet where I could eat dinner and you know I had about eight hours before I could leave. I'd been up since 6 a.m. that day and charged my phone, updated Aaron on my travels and um, waited. So 11.30 rolls around and I board the plane and um, i would never flown on a Dutch airline. Everything is in Dutch, you know. I don't speak Dutch. <laughs> and um, flew overnight, made it to Amsterdam. Had never been to Amsterdam, got a stamp in Amsterdam. And then had to find my way to my flight to Bilbao, Spain, which is where I would eventually land and then take a bus to San Sebastian. But in Europe, they bus you to your plane. So I boarded a bus in Amsterdam and they drove us to the plane and I climbed onto the plane and there I was off to Bilbao and I landed at about 4 p.m., 5 p.m. in Bilbao. Had, had been up since 6 a.m. on Monday, it's not Tuesday. Took a bus to San Sebastian, which was the easiest thing to do. Got to San Sebastian at about seven o'clock, met up with most of the pilgrims. Um, everyone was coming in at different times. And I had a day to land and to arrive and to prepare myself. But no amount of preparation can prepare you for what I just did. Uh, that night, Tuesday night, we, we're in San Sebastian, Spain, which is a gastronomical hub for Spain. There are more Michelin star restaurants in this town than probably here in the States in a concentrated area. And so a whole bunch of pastors that I went out for pinchos, which is Northern Spain's version of tapas. And I discovered very quickly that I was not getting enough protein on that first night. And you know, you have little tapas and you go around to different places, these pincho bars, and some of them they're quite elevated, and some of them are just, you know, working class pinchos, you know, just tapas. Got to bed about one o'clock that night. And then on Wednesday was, was the day that everyone had to arrive, because Thursday we were starting. On Wednesday, we had a meeting. I went and bought hiking poles at the Decathlon, because they said our first week was going to be in the foothills of the Pyrenees. And I thought, good Lord. I, I, I know what hiking mountains are, and I know what foothills are. I better get some hiking poles. So for 40 euro, I take myself and I get hiking poles. Now, I didn't train with hiking poles. I just trained walking. And again, no amount of preparation can prepare you to do this walk. Thursday, I woke up with a slight headache. Probably because I didn't eat enough protein the night before. 
There was no breakfast. You just had to start walking. Mm -hmm. It was raining, so I put on my raincoat. And for 10 miles, up about 160 flight of stairs, which is what my phone recorded in my watch, I vomited for the first 10 miles. In the rain, in this outfit, in these shoes, but those hiking poles saved me. I traversed rivers, bridges made out of rocks. I thank goodness my hiking poles, I could find the sturdy ground. And at about the 10 mile mark, I had tried eating an orange, an apple. I was hiking with Jake, one of the leaders, who's a longtime friend of mine, who actually solicited my first book, After This Theology. Jake and I, he said to me at one point, while I was actively vomiting, remember, you paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, wrong time, Jake, wrong time. We made it about 10 miles to a little house filled with pilgrims and a stove where you could warm up. And I thought, I, I can't make it the next five miles. And I, I was sick. And so the, the folks called me a taxi. And I took the taxi the last five miles. I was freezing, drenched in rain, and had my own room that night, thankfully, just in case I had something longer than 24 hour bug. Dried my clothes, just hung them over the balcony, washed clothes in my sink, did take a shower, and I did have hot water, I was grateful for that. Went out to dinner that night and asked for rice and chicken. I thought, if I've got a stomach bug, or if I've got food poisoning, or I, I, need, I, I just need a very simple plan. Thankfully, I could speak the language so I could ask for what I needed, and they accommodated. And then the next day, he'd get up and do it again. I walked a half a marathon for two weeks straight every day. And I met people who were walking the Camino for a wide variety of reasons. And what I learned is that you just begin to trust strangers. And you begin to see the light reflected in other people. I met Nancy and Erwin from Berlin when we were at Sobrado Amanches. We went to a monastery there. And then I saw Nancy and Erwin again. They're from Berlin, but Nancy is originally from LA in Mexico. And we talked to each other over breakfast one morning. We just happened to be in the same place and she saw me and so we were sitting next to each other and she finally joined my table. And she said, the Camino is on your own terms. You, you do it your own way. For Erwin, he's like 6'3 and walks very fast, so he was walking ahead of Nancy, and Nancy could walk about 40 kilometers in one day, but was walking a little bit slower. And we had that conversation, I said, yeah, the Camino is an individual journey. And I began to realize that Alfred is that place where it's a little bit quirky, a little bit weird, but it's, it's a kind of a way to be here.
It's a peaceful place, which in the world today, there is not much peace. There's something unique here. There's something I discovered being on the Camino, that peace can be achieved. That I've never felt as safe as I have felt in the past six years as I did on the Camino. I was outside for hours, six, seven, eight hours a day, by myself in the middle of nowhere, Spain, on a tiny road, sometimes paved with cars passing you, but most <clears throat> times a dirt road, or in the Pyrenees, it was muddy and very narrow. <laughs> And I began to think about how Jesus said it is easier for the camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. I've been working poor my whole life. Yes, I have very fancy letters after my name. But I feel called to follow Jesus, which is not going to make you a lot of money. I feel called to provide moral leadership in a time of chaos, in a time of violence, accelerated violence. I feel called to be on the way with people. And I knew that fleeing Nashville last August when Aaron and I left, that my nervous system needed to heal, that my light inside of me was having a hard time shining because of how people with different politics treated me. It's relationships all the way down. Blaine Crawford, who is a Presbyterian pastor, went to Denver Seminary at the same time that I was doing my PhD in Denver. We connected. He carried some of my stuff every day of the trip because my bag was too heavy. Your bag had to be 50 kilograms for, for them to carry it. So I had to distribute my stuff to blame so that my bag could make it to the next stop, which it did. Blaine and I were strangers. He's very tall and younger than I am. And without hesitation, he agreed to interdependency with me. And it reminded me that when we begin to lean into emergence, into what is now, we begin to plant seeds for another possible world. The trust that I had in Blaine and Blaine and me. The fact that if he arrived before me, he would wait for me and then bring me my stuff. Or if I arrived before him, he said, yeah, go ahead and get your stuff out of my bag. And there was this just open dialogue. I wasn't gonna steal anything. He wasn't gonna keep anything, but there was this trust and for every day, I encounter trust from strangers. We didn't always speak the same language. In fact, one man from France, I saw him towards the end, and I saw him several times. And when I got to Santiago de Compostela, in line to get my paper that shows 285 kilometers that I walked, he was there, and he said hello to me. I don't know his name, but we recognized one another because we saw each other while we were hiking. How do we recover that sense of trust and familiarity in a time when the world is falling apart? Contemplation is part of that journey, I think. When we take a chance, take time, 
to nurture the life within us, like we do each Sunday. I didn't have high hopes of like getting a paper, like that wasn't it for me. There were some people who were like, I need that paper. But I was letting go. And I texted Aaron. And I said, this pilgrimage has helped me stop white knuckling life. The past six years, I've been targeted by the extreme right wing. Death threats. Towards the end of our time in Nashville, I wasn't leaving the house because of the emails that I was getting and because of the discourse contained in those emails. I was scared. And here I was in nowhere Spain by myself most of the time. Sometimes I was with people. And I just walked. My therapist said that walking was the best medicine. The bilateral movement metabolizes trauma. I don't know what is going to come next, but I know for the past several weeks, I have felt incredibly nourished by the Holy Spirit with a group of pastors who care deeply for the church and for community and for people in general. And this pilgrimage has been done since the ninth century and has hosted Millions of people. And so there I was feeling the energy of the people who came before me. Does that mean church is over? <laughs> <laughs> it is 1130 and the farmer's market has started. <laughs> we are on the way together. We're on a journey. We're trying to figure out how to be the community that God has called us to be. Who has God called each and every one of us to be? We're called to shine our light. We're called to steward truth, beauty, and goodness. We're called to provide moral leadership in a time of chaos. We're called to care for the poor. The Pilgrim's Way is not fancy. Like I said, I was eating toast and coffee for breakfast. We have something to offer. Our community here. And I hope that the Camino creates conditions for us to take what we have to the community. To begin to open our doors a little bit more wider for people. To invite people into our lives. Some of you know that the bar is open at the whole house, which is our house. And we can't wait to start hosting people. I hope that this pilgrimage that I've been on can be a gift for all of us. I want to invite some of the pastors that I've been with to come here. Some of them are in New York. So it will be easy for them to get here. To begin to share with us, how do we be a worshiping community in this place and offer the peace and the love and the gifts that we have? We've, we have something here. I was telling Aaron last night, I was sitting on the newly minted patio that the Camino is about emergence, and what we have here in Alfred is also about emergence. So how do we practice that more intentionally? How do we 
really commit to a kind of relational dynamic that heals people, that invites people, that helps people imagine? What is the dance we're willing to do for us? I never thought that um, doing something like this would give me the time to just sink into my body. My legs feel like stubs. And I'm so glad to be sleeping in my own bed because the beds are not comfortable on the Camino. The albergues could be very pleasant, but you might be sleeping on box springs. I'm grateful for every step I took and I look forward to sharing all of it with you and having some kind of program in the fall when people get back from traveling with pictures and maybe some video. But we are on the way together, stewarding another possible world through prayer, through reflection, and through service. On the night before we set out on the Camino, we had an anointing service on the beach. May you be healthy, may you be happy, may you be at peace, was the service. And I take that with me and I offer it to you. May we learn to be happy, may we learn to be healthy, and may we learn to be at peace. It's good to be back. Amen.
our companion on the walk, our guide at the crossroads, our breath in our weariness, our protection in danger, our albergue on the Camino, our shade in the heat, our light in the darkness, our, cons our consolation in our discouragements, and our strength in our attentions. God dearly loves us, and through Christ left us an example that we might follow in his footsteps. Christ is the light that has come into this world. May God grant that this light shine around you and in you and beyond you, and that you walk in it. Amen.